Many species across the world are in danger of going extinct. Among them is a tiny orchid, the small world pagonia, almost entirely gone in North America. The small world pagonia used to be in Maryland. As far as we know and anybody else knows, it's now extinct in the state of Maryland. It's, a, it's an orchid which is listed as probably the most threatened and endangered plant in North America, if not certainly in the East Coast. Can the small world pagonia be saved? If it can, then perhaps we can understand how to give other endangered species a chance at survival. One in every 10 plant species are orchids. They grow everywhere from the tropics to above the Arctic Circle and in pretty much every habitat imaginable. When you mention orchids to people, they know something about them. They may not know much technically, but they know that orchids are cool. They know that they're beautiful. We think that is a group of plants that if we can educate the public about the importance of biodiversity and conserving that biodiversity that will go a long way toward living in a much healthier world. At the Smithsonian Environmental Research Center, researchers are trying to understand why orchids are going extinct, which may help them conserve biodiversity. Blooming right here in Maryland are over 30 species of orchids, many of which are threatened or at risk of extinction. In order to save the small world pagonia, the team at CERC is studying what resources it needs to grow. Keeping the pagonia, or any orchid, from going extinct requires a lot more than just planting seeds. For these orchids, and for all orchids, the key is the fungi. All orchids need fungi. There are stages in their life cycle where they cannot exist unless they have an appropriate fungus. Scientists at CERC have discovered that to grow and thrive, orchids have established symbiotic associations with fungi. Microscopic fungi that live in soil provide many plants, including all orchids, the food they need to grow. What the orchids do in order to get nutrients is they form associations with fungi. And the roots is where that all happens. The fungi grow into the cells of the roots, form tight coils of fungal hyphae or fungal threads, and the orchid can then digest those. But the orchids and fungi have to match. Not just any fungus will do. This orchid here, Liparis lilifolia, is a species that makes it especially clear why it is that we need to understand the relationships between the orchids and their fungi. Now this is not an endangered orchid, but this is an orchid that throughout its entire range relies on a single species of fungus. If that fungus is not present and growing well in the environment, the seeds of this orchid will not germinate and the orchid itself will die off. If a forest doesn't have the right fungi, the small world pagonia can't survive. The problem for many of these orchids is that the trees are changing. Things like logging and residential development destroy some species, and different ones rise up to take their place. Different trees mean different fungi, and different fungi mean different orchids. So we have this web where everything is connected. The trees, the fungi, the orchids. And it's also a situation where the microscopic world beneath our feet is influencing the biodiversity of the plants that we see. Since there are no small world pagonias growing in the wild in Maryland, we get our field data from several populations in Virginia. But we're also working on trying to grow the small world pagonia in the lab here at CERC. This is the more normal one, plant green with one, the solid yep. green leaves. Our primary interest when we're collecting orchids is in the root system where the symbiotic fungus is located. The roots have many species of fungi attached to them. Some are beneficial to the orchid, some are not. There's nothing that the orchid is doing to encourage the, the fungus to grow into its root. This is just part of nature. One of the things that has struck me for a long time is that all these orchids are different from each other. So if you're concerned about any one of the species, you really have to understand its life cycle and, and how it all fits together. Scientists at CERC have found six species of fungi in the lab that match up with the small world pagonia to give them the nutrients they need. 
In their greenhouse, the team is also trying to get small world pagonia seeds to germinate. So what we have here growing in this pot is we have a small world begonia growing here with a small beech tree. And the reason for having this tree seedling in here is that the fungi that are needed by the orchid must themselves be supported by a tree. Also in this pot, we have a small packet of small world begonia seeds. And we have a seed packet here buried in the soil. It looks a lot like this. It's basically mesh with a whole lot of tiny, tiny dust-like orchid seeds in it. And we're hoping that through, through the fungi growing out from the orchid to the tree, those fungi will also be able to support germination of the seeds. By planting the orchid seeds with the beech seedling and perhaps other tree seedlings, the CERC team hopes to have these seeds germinate so the small world pagonia can once again grow in Maryland. If you're restoring biodiversity, you can't just restore, you know, a quarter of it or a third of it or a half of it. The goal is to restore all of it. Everything that we humans benefit from nature for is all coming to us from intact ecosystems. The orchid fungus tree connection is just one of the many wonders of the natural world that we don't fully understand. There's so much going on below ground that we know nothing about. And the interaction between the orchid and its fungi gives us a window into that underground world to help us to understand what's going on. If they go extinct, we have lost that opportunity to understand what's going on below ground. That is one of the reasons that we're trying so hard to preserve them. Once we lose a piece of the puzzle of life, it's gone forever.